Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's learn regarding the action potential in a nerve fiber. So what we will be learning, we are going to learn the definition, the phases of action potential and the ionic basis of the different phases of this action potential. So what's the definition? Action potential is a series of potential changes which occurs in a cell membrane of excitable cells upon application of the threshold stimulus. Now let's understand the phases. So this is the recording of the action potential. Whenever you are asked regarding the phases, always start with the resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential in a nerve fiber is minus 70 millivolts. Now, as soon as I apply the stimulus, I get a mild deflection of the baseline. So this mild brief deflection of the baseline is what is called as stimulus artifact. Now, this stimulus artifact is produced due to the current leakage whenever the stimulus is applied and the current is leaking from the stimulating electrode to the recording electrode. Now, after this stimulus artifact, I get an isopotential interval. This line, what you are seeing, this is called as an isopotential interval, which is called as the latent period. So latent period is the time duration between the application of the stimulus and the beginning of the action potential. So why this latent period is occurring? This is the time which is taken by an impulse to travel along the axon from the site of the stimulus to the recording electrode. And remember that this latent period, the duration of this latent period is proportionate to the distance between the stimulating electrode and the recording electrode. That means if the distance between the stimulating and the recording electrode is less, the duration of the latent period is less. And if the distance between the stimulating and the recording electrode is more then the duration of the latent period is also more. So this is one factor on which latent period is dependent upon. The second factor is that the duration of the latent period is inversely proportional to the speed of conduction. Let's say the nerve conduction in this particular nerve is very fast. Then what is going to happen to the latent period, the duration, the duration will be less and vice versa. Now, after the stimulus artifact and the latent period begins the action potential. So the first manifestation of the proper action potential is seen here, wherein the potential from minus 70 millivolts touches to minus 55 millivolts. And this is not a rapid movement, but this is a slow movement which occurs. So this minus 55 millivolts, when it is going to touch, that level is called as the firing level. And this phase of the action potential, wherein slowly the membrane potential moves from minus 70 to minus 55 millivolts, is called as a phase of slow depolarization. So it's a slow depolarization, which is making the membrane potential to hit the firing level. How much is the firing level? The firing level is minus 55 millivolts. So why we are calling this minus 55 as firing level is, so this is the point where the rate of depolarization is going to increase rapidly. Okay. So from this point, the depolarization is going to rapidly increase. So this entire phase of depolarization, which we are seeing from the firing level till it goes to plus 35 millivolts. That phase is what is called as a phase of rapid depolarization. Okay, so we are supposed to write two depolarizations here. One is the slow depolarization. Another one is the rapid depolarization wherein the potential from minus 55 goes to plus 35 millivolts. So this rapid depolarization is also having one more phase wherein the potential moves from zero and it overshoots. That means it is going above the zero and going till plus 35. So this part of the rapid depolarization is what is called as the overshoot. So as soon as the membrane potential it hits plus 35, from there the membrane potential reverses and falls approximately to the resting level. So where is this resting level? The resting level was here. This was our resting membrane potential. So it almost approximately is falling back to the resting membrane potential. So this rapid fall which is occurring, okay, this phase is what is called as a phase of rapid repolarization. This is called as a rapid repolarization. But the rapid repolarization is going to slow down as it is hitting this resting membrane potential. So the slowing down of the rapid repolarization that is this phase is what is called as after depolarization that is from here till here it's called as after depolarization now after the after depolarization the potential hits to the resting membrane potential but what is happening here is that after reaching the resting level the trajectory is shooting overshooting the resting membrane potential okay and then it is slowly touching back to the resting membrane potential so this overshoot which is occurring of the trajectory after it has hit this level of resting membrane potential, that phase is what is called as after hyperpolarization. So whenever we are writing regarding the different phases of 
action potential always we are supposed to start from the resting membrane potential which is minus 70 millivolts in case of a nerve fiber followed by that there is a small deflection of this resting membrane potential upon application of the stimulus which is called as the stimulus artifact followed by that there is again an isoelectric potential which is called as the latent period now after the latent period slowly the membrane potential moves from minus 70 to minus 55 millivolts that phase is called as a phase of slow depolarization and minus 55 here is called as the firing level because once the potential hits the firing level there is a rapid change in potential from minus 55 to plus 35 which is called as the rapid depolarization which also includes this overshoot wherein the potential moves from 0 to plus 35 millivolts. Now, once the potential hits plus 35 millivolts, the potential is again dropping down back almost to the resting level and this is occurring very rapidly. That is called as rapid repolarization. After that, the rapid repolarization slows down and that is what is called as after depolarization. After the after depolarization is hitting the resting, the trajectory is overshooting the resting membrane potential in a hyperpolarizing direction and that is what is called as after hyperpolarization. So, I want you to include all this point RMP stimulus artifact, latent period, slow depolarization, firing level, rapid depolarization, overshoot, rapid repolarization, after depolarization and after hyperpolarization so that you will get complete marks. Next let's understand the ionic basis of depolarization and repolarization. Basically depolarization occurs whenever I apply a stimulus there is opening of voltage gated sodium channels. So when there is opening of this voltage gated sodium channels that is going to cause a sodium influx. So whenever there is a sodium influx obviously there is going to be depolarization of the membrane. But remember that these voltage gated sodium channels these are called as the fast channels that is they open and close very fastly. And one more thing that we have to mention here is that this sodium influx or this opening of the voltage gated sodium channels is a very good example of positive feedback response that means what is happening is whenever i am giving a stimulus that stimulus is going to cause opening of voltage gated sodium channels so whenever there is opening of this voltage gated sodium channels what is happening there is sodium influx so whenever there is a sodium influx what happens to the membrane potential the membrane potential is going to become depolarized so whenever there is depolarization there is further more opening of voltage gated sodium channels more sodium influx more depolarization so this entire cycle of which the positive feedback response is what is called as the hodgkin's cycle this is called as the hodgkin cycle now as soon as the potential hits plus 35 millivolts okay two events are going to occur one is there is closure of voltage gated sodium channels because these are the fast channels they open and close very fast and at 35 millivolts the second event which is occurring is a very important event which is opening of voltage gated potassium channels so with the closure of voltage gated sodium channels what is going to happen the sodium influx is going to stop okay it's going to stop completely and with the opening of voltage gated potassium channels what is going to happen the potassium efflux is going to begin so the potassium efflux is going to occur immediately and rapidly that is what is going to cause a rapid phase of repolarization okay rapid repolarization is occurring because of the potassium efflux now because these voltage gated potassium channels in comparison with the voltage gated sodium channels they are slow channels that is they take their own sweet time to open as well as to close now as the membrane potential is approaching the resting membrane potential this is repolarization what happens is the potassium efflux is going to slow down the slowing of the potassium efflux is going to result in what is called as after depolarization why because the potassium channels are slow channels so once this this Pot potential has hit the resting membrane potential still few potassium channels are not closed completely still few potassium channels they are in a open state so what is occurring the potassium efflux keeps on continuing so because of the continuous potassium efflux even after the potential has hit the resting membrane potential what is going to happen to the potential the potential is going to overshoot in an hyperpolarizing manner so this is what is called as the phase of after hyperpolarization which occurs because of continuous potassium efflux because few potassium channels are still open they have not closed why because voltage gated potassium channels are slow channels so this is the ionic basis of action potential and the phases of the action potential thank you for listening